Hello everyone, this is Kuroda giving you a shoutcast in game 2 in a series between Team Liquid's Rhett and Tarsen here on Tall Dream Altar. Um, yeah, I got a couple quick games that I need to cast for you guys today, so hopefully, um, yeah, all these games will be interesting. Anyways, Liquid Red spawning as the blue Zerg on the bottom left hand side of the map. Meanwhile, on the top right hand side of the map, we do have Tarsen as the red Terran player. Terran versus Zerg here on Tall Dream Altar promises to be a good matchup. And I'm curious as to why Tarsen chose this map. Now, Tall Dream Altar is normally considered a Zerg favored map. In my experience, um, Zerg is able to establish this expansion fairly quickly and then also perhaps try to clear out rocks and take down this expansion as well. Um, it's a little bit more harder for a, a Zerg versus, say, um, a Protoss, as Protoss can forge fast expand, and then the Zerg has a little bit more difficult of a time trying to take a third base. One of the things, though, that Terran does have to their advantage is the ability to use siege tanks from the low ground to punish and attack this high ground expansion. So that may be what Tarsen was trying to go for while choosing this map. But in choosing this map, and um, in choosing this map, he probably hoped that it would be a rather close posi position spawns as opposed to cross spawns. Cross spawns, it does make it a little bit more difficult to get in position as the Zerglings and other Zerg units are able to swarm around in the center and get to you very, very quickly. Now we can see that Rhett is opening up to what I believe will be, will be a fast hatchery here at the natural expansion. You can see it's already being laid down. Meanwhile, over here, Tarsen opening up with a refinery after the barracks. So it looks like he may be going for Hellion Harassment once more. Um, it didn't work out well on Metalopolis, so hopefully this time around it will work out a little bit better for him as this is a best of three series and he is currently down one nothing. Now, as I mentioned in game one, this is taken from the Battle.net Invitational. Battle.net Invitational from the European servers, the top eight players on, on Battle.net um, on the European servers and um, competing and fighting it out for that top seed. And I believe, um, I, b I believe as the players play against each other and they make their way in, they will be able to head into BlizzCon and, and play in the finals, which I believe will be at BlizzCon 2011. I will be at BlizzCon, so hopefully um, now that my face is out there a little bit more with some interviews with Spanishiwa, um, Spanishiwa also some interviews with TLO and Todd, um, you guys can come up to me, say hello. Um, don't ask for my autograph just quite yet because I, I kind of get dumbfounded. Um, someone asked for my autograph at MLG Anaheim, as I mentioned in a previous cast, and I was like, I, I don't... Do I need a Sharpie? Do I need a piece of paper? What do I do? So I wasn't really quite sure about that. Anyways, into the game we go. We have an SCV wandering around on the inside, quickly taking a look at the hatchery and the other hatchery over here that is currently building up a queen as well. So both play um, this build is very, very similar to the build that he used on Metalopolis. Meanwhile, Tarsen doing the similar build as well. I do expect a command center to be placed down here. It is a little bit delayed as we now see the swap on the factory there. And now as that it does swap in just a moment, it will allow for the training of double Hellions. Wait for it, Tarsen now um, quickly swapping the location there and now training up two Hellions at a time as an SCV attempts to run away and a return all the way home. It looks like it will be able to escape as a Zergling is only slightly faster than an SCV without that metabolic boost. And I believe that SCV should be able to reach home under the cover fire of a Marine or maybe even two Hellions to shut down this Zergling here. So the Zergling still hopping, skipping, and jumping. It looks like the Hellions are out and the Hellions will um, be able to finish off that Zergling there. Down it goes as the Hellions now look to perhaps Russell or wrestle map control away from his opponent, shutting down another Zergling there, making sure that any movement and outside of his base will not be spotted by these Onaga Towers. However, there is this Overlord in the air, as now two Hellions looking to deal some damage. And are do we have a tech lab and a swap? We do have a tech lab down. We are going to get that swap now, and that blue flame research will be started as that command center now finishes off, freeing up some supply there. As these Hellions now once again return back, there is too many Queens. As Red already able to just fend off this attack there, and now there's also creep tumors down as well. These creep tumors going to really, really prevent... Um, any sort of serious Hellion harassment until perhaps a Medevac joins in on the fight. Three Queens for two bases definitely means a lot more Creep Tumors will be laid down. And I believe Rhett will be able to perhaps get some more map control once again. The Hellions, however, coming back in 
able to destroy one of those creep trimmers trying to slow down this econo or this this game so far and we'll see what happens here there is that spine crawler and with that range of seven able to get in a lot of damage as well as we can see zerglings and now a tech to tier two about to be completed we should be going into perhaps a spire if the previous game was any indication red deciding to choose the same strategy it worked last time why not might as well try to try it one more time and see if it works again and the hellions now finally backing off here we are getting into that meta back double up, training up those marines as well that blue flame research about to be completed and we'll see whether or not these hellions are will be worth their weight the harvester count definitely in favor of Rhett at this stage 41 drones with six more nine more on the way quickly we will have 50 drones and those 50 drones will just move um, what Red's economy into the stratosphere as he at some point needs to get up a macro hatch otherwise he otherwise he will not be able to spend those minerals as quickly as he would like a viking is also now joining in on the fight as well a medevac should already be moving across the field where is it am i correct yes a medevac also moving across the field as well as the Hellions are lining up, getting in position, Rhett, I believe, did spot this for just a moment. And Rhett now making his way over with those Queens. The Spire, you know, another spine crawler right there. Is this going to be enough damage? There are Zerglings down over here. Are those Zerglings going to be able to run by? The Hellions being able to line up a lot of damage now. And in comes this push. The Marines now engaging as well. The Hellions doing the best job they can trying to uh, splash and get as much damage as possible it looks like a queen will get taken down one queen now destroyed and now down goes a hellion so the hell or down goes a spine crawler so one spine crawler is now down and the hellions getting surrounded by zerglings but however the, and the hellions able to line up and be able to just completely torch many of these zerglings it looks like two marines now finishing off the rest of this and the hellions may be able to perhaps make a run into the base but there are now mutilists two hellions looking to deal damage is it going to be able to line this up no not able to shut down any of these units here two fresh hellions coming back in as well but those quickly running into some zerglings and some mutilists as now ret in position to do a bit of a counter attack marines and vikings are deciding to back off a medevac will get destroyed over here down it goes as the mutilists now launching their counter attack will ret be able to get to a critical number of mutilists once more there is a missile turret the missile turret about to be completed will it get completed in time is the key question and it looks like it will just get completed in time scb now trying to repair a viking now making its way over as well scb is doing a good job keeping that missile turret up even though only one can repair at a time a little bit of an issue there perhaps the missile turret should have been built here so that more scvs could have been repairing at the same time as the mutilists now look to hit the production buildings there is, however, one missile turret by Tarson, so some nice static defense by Tarson, allowing him to uh, push back this, and now Red playing like a pro, getting um, double expanding at the right opportunity once he wrestles away map control, and there you go, I believe with 62 drones, or 61 drones now, and another round of spawn larva coming in, Red will be able to saturate these four bases rather easily, until we see um, Tarson move out with a large enough army to deal with these marines or w w deal with these mutilists with marines nine ten more drones now coming into play that is a lot of drones we'll see what's going to be happening here as Tarson now moves to put in pressure and this expansion is come or the main base is now completely open now shutting down missile those supply depots but no there are going to be some attacks in the main front door as well drones attempting to run away will they be able to get there in time as I believe the Mutilus could have been able to come in and get more damage still. The Marines are now coming in from the back and it looks like Tarson has a rather large number of units and it looks like damage could be dealt. Level 1 weapons upgrade about to be completed on those Marines. Marines now shutting down two Overlords rather quickly. Now taking down a spine crawler. Marines quickly pushing in. Is it going to be enough? Yes, down goes one and down goes that Queen as well. And I believe these Mutilus were just a little bit too far away and now Tarson with 23 marines will be able to shut this down and now the medevacs are getting destroyed but this attacking force from tarson looking absolutely devastating it looks like red did one drone to one round of drone too many as he loses his natural expansion and 
I do not see this army getting slowed down at any course or at, at, at any time soon. The Mutalists are really going to have a very difficult time. More medevacs need to join in this army, though, as Banelings running into these, um, running into those Hellions there, and those get taken down once again. More Banelings are being morphed in. The movement speed not yet quite done. Banelings now trying to chase after those Marines. Is it going to be enough? As the Marines now trying to separate and able to do so nicely, but I believe the medevacs have been destroyed. I believe the Marines are going to try to shut down the rest of those Mutalists. A Zergling joining in on the fight and now the Zergling is going a, a better unit to trade against those Marines. Marines are rather cheap but Zerglings are cheaper and I believe a Zergling trading against a Marine definitely definitely worth it there. We can see now the Mutalists were looking to once again push forward again and now finish off the rest of those Marines but a lot of damage was dealt. 48 drones compared to 46 SCVs is now another large army making its way across the field. The Hellions getting a little overzealous in their exchange or in, in their push, running ahead of, ahead of those Marines. And now in come the Banelings. Banelings are now once again turning around at just the right moment. Are we going to have enough as the Banelings may be able to find their target? Are the Marines going to be able to pull back in time? Yes, they are going to be able to pull back another a Hellion gets destroyed before anything can really happen there as the Marines now continuing their push. It looks like these Overlords may get destroyed, getting caught out of position. Drones now uh, running for their lives. It looks like they will be able to escape. In comes a Queen as well, but the Marines are upgraded 1-0, now getting the 1-1 upgrades. As the Hellions once again getting caught out of position, Overlords getting destroyed. So Tarsin just using this group of Marines and simply being all over the place at the same time. I believe this spine crawler will get taken down. A Baneling able to take down multiple Marines, and it looks like this Marine split not yet good enough. But reinforcements still coming in. Marines shutting down more and more of those Zerglings, trying to get some distance between the two. And it looks like these Marines perhaps will be able to will be forced to jump inside. And yes, more reinforcements coming in at just the right time. Essentially, those Hellions scaring off all of those Marines as a medevac may get into a bit of trouble there. And no, Marines able to turn back around just in time and shoo it away. Even forces going in 86 versus 91 army composition slightly or about even if you take into consideration the gas army um, here. Not too much of a difference at all. The Marines are upgraded 1-0 will soon be 1-1 as Medivacs and Hellions are still being added. It looks as though the Terran player should be getting onto a large amount of gas. Only one SCV on that refinery there. So I guess that is the reason why he has not fallen behind as of yet. Liquid Red now getting into a large number of Banelings. These Banelings are going to spell a certain doom, especially without Siege Tanks. Siege Tanks nor uh, counter Banelings as they are able to do splash damage and also um, destroy multiple Banelings at a time. You can see that those Banelings are now slowly pushing their way in. A lot of Marines here, um, a dozen Marines perhaps trying to fend off all of these Banelings. The Banelings in the center portion of the map, they do have significant movement speed upgrades as it looks as though a couple drones were getting torched over here. How many, what are the worker kills now at 28 worker kills compared to six? 57 drones versus 57 SCVs. We are still even at this stage in the game, folks. As we are now getting starting, I'm wondering really what the gas, where the gas is being used by Tarson. Tarson only has one SCV on gas there as well, so very, very minimal gas being harvested throughout the course of the game so far by Tarson. So that is the reason why um, he he is so heavy in Marines and Hellions. He's finally getting some more medevacs as this expansion has been cleared up. Marines will be able to shut down a Zergling rather quickly and now perhaps a push on the front door. This is going to be looking very, very bad. That is a lot of Banelings. They are going to be able to find their target. And what is going to be happening here? The uh, Marines now trying to pull back and it looks like the SCVs, Banelings running in, shutting down multiple SCVs. Mutilus now getting destroyed as well, but the Banelings can still easily take down multiple SCVs here. Is it going to happen is the key question. Banelings not finding their target over there on that side as the Marines are now fighting off the rest of those Zerglings. We are now sitting at 22 worker kills compared to 28, down to 45 SCVs as Red now mounting his counterattack with an even stronger economy sitting behind him. Army-wise, you can see 1750 versus 550. So even though it was a trade in economy, Tarson does have the is ahead in terms of his economic or his warfare powers or warfare powers right now with a much much larger army. As the Hellions may get repaired in order to do a, a bit of a counter push, a Zergling trying to make its way in, unable to do so. As we now see 76, 78 drones coming in from Ret. More than what 75% of Ret's army count is in drones 
So that is going to be a serious, serious issue. You can see a 400, 300 food and gas army compared with 3,900 total resources means that Tarsen is four is has what an army four times more powerful as we are now going into two two marines those two two marines may spell certain doom the banings do deal 39 damage per attack 37 after after that armor um armor upgrades on those marines and what will be happening banings now simply rolling out it looks like the mutilus able to or sorry the zerglings getting torched there as the hellings were able to cut it down and what is going to be happening? That is going to be the difficult issue now. As you can see now, the Baning still rolling around the map, trying to find its target, uh, trying to perhaps hit this very, very densely packed group of Marines. Those Banings could even up the game. There are some Baning landmines here, but they are not being found as Tarsen being ever so careful to not step on Banings. Mutilus now running in. Marines now coming in from behind. Going to be able to shut down one Mutilus there as this Mutilus flock getting larger and larger. Level 3 weapons upgrade now being started. Banings now going to be trying to roll in. Is this going to work out? That is the key question. And there are so many Marines, but those Marines can die rather quickly. We are getting the Pathogen Glands. We are getting the pathogen glands as well as the banings and mutilus now pushing through. Is this going to be enough? Banings are morphing in, and I believe the split is going to happen just in time. It looks like a lot more mutilus are just getting shot down. And are these banings going to get destroyed? Yes, they are going to get destroyed before they find their target. And now more banings coming in from the south, but just enough of an army to exchange there as Tarsen still keeping all of his marines alive and this may be the end as these marines are pretty much going to be unchallenged for a little while longer no not unchallenged six infestors now coming into play so Rhett if he's able to get off some critical fungal growth should be able to turn around oh one infestor getting destroyed before a fungal growth even comes out even though it did have 75 energy Tarsen with so many marines and now medevacs now coming in from behind but there is a lot of medevacs you got to remember those medevacs healing up all of those marines after one fungal growth still staying alive there and now continuing this push those two hellions drones now pushing their way in a queen gonna get shot down rather quickly and there's the gg Rhett losing game two in this best of three series the tarson after tarson and looked to be behind for quite some time thanks for watching thanks for listening i hope you guys enjoyed game two in this best of three series stay tuned for game three